Welcome to the director's cut of Christian Nutrition, the show where we review every single episode of VeggieTales chronologically. And by we, I mean just me. Celery Night Fever! It sounds like it could easily be a boxing match between Celery. Celery Night Fever released in August of 2014 and on my current search to find the last true VeggieTales gem. People have been telling me that this is it. This is the episode. Look no further than Celery Night Fever. Well, after Mac Larry and the Stinky Cheese Battle and the Final Frontier, I'm quite interested to see if we can actually have three back to back to back episodes that are good. Like, I, let alone this being a gem, I just hope it's a good episode. Three back to back to back, that would be great. It feels like forever since we've had that kind of consistency, but with that in mind, let's review Salary Night Fever. Hi kids, I'm Bob the Tomato. And I'm Larry. The guy who ate my pie. Larry ate your pie? How dare he? How dare he do such a thing? I am so triggered right now. What's wrong, Jimmy? What's wrong? What's wrong? I'll tell you what's wrong. Jerry, bring in Exhibit A. Gasp! I'm sorry, guys. You can't put whipped cream on sorry, buster. You can't put whipped cream on sorry. Well, sounds like we've already learned a life lesson today here, kids. Go ahead, end the show, roll credits. Was there an exhibit B? Uh, usually when there's an exhibit A, there's an exhibit B. I was thinking the pie was exhibit B. Wasn't that exhibit A? The pie tin's exhibit A. The pie itself is exhibit B. Which we can't really get to right now because it's in my stomach. Oh, that hurts! Hello darkness, my old friend. It's about friendship and forgiveness. I was hoping it would be about pie. We already had that. It was called Duke of the Great Pie War. I don't know why I took off my glasses for that, but I did just for you. Groovy baby. We get a groovy opening song that doesn't feel like VeggieTales at all. But then again, I have never seen VeggieTales in the 1970s, so what do I really know? As it turns out, we are watching an old VHS and Larry is now retired from this band, the Groovy Brothers. He instead leads a life full of magic, which he tries to do at his granddaughter's school. But why did you break up? You were such a great band. <gasps> oh look, a blimp. Huh? Huh? Oh! Wow! wow. show moving. I gotta walk my Pekingese poodle in a half an hour. Class, this is Mr. Bruce Onion. But as he is known to us... When you use Old Spice Body Wash with Invisible Spray, you smell so manly scientists who want to study your manliness! That's right, Terry Crews is on VeggieTales. I don't know what to think about this. Whoa! And I got another me to get away in! And another me for emotional support! You got this. So Terry Crews is a real estate tycoon. He buys up a lot of old downrun places and redevelops them, basically buying garbage and, and making it something good. One man's trash, another man's treasure. That's him. While this sounds like a normal job, in the world of VeggieTales, this makes him the villain. And why, you may ask, why would this make him the villain? Well, obviously, because he's taking a local rundown park and turning it into a parking lot. How dare he? As it turns out, Terry Crews paid $100,000 for that park, and Laura thinks that if the town can somehow raise $100,000, thousand dollars then they can buy the park back clearly laura and i understand she's a child so i'm not gonna harp on this too much but he bought it for a hundred thousand dollars doesn't mean he has to sell it to you for a hundred thousand dollars just want to make sure we're clear on that junior you hear that we're gonna work together on this junior 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 what what's going on I can already tell I like this version of Junior. A real slacker type, not at all the accidental savior that he is presented as in other episodes. Ha ha! I'm gonna tear down your park! No, please, Mr. Onion! Don't tear down our park! I don't sound like that. You know, I think Junior's depiction is pretty accurate. No, I'm gonna roll over you and sit on you! That's what you think, Mr. Onion! Yay! My hero. You know, I also like Laura here. She isn't taking Junior seriously. This is something, you know, you and I have learned over the years, but uh, it took them forever. It took them 20 plus years to learn this lesson. Uh, it's so basic. They should have known already. I'm gonna spray you with my anti-gravity spray. Ah! That's as 
far as I've gotten. So, do you like it? I don't like it. I love it, love it, love it. Uh oh. So good it hurts. No, Junior. I want to do something serious. Do you even know what happens when a guy gets hit with anti gravity spray? They, uh, float up in the air? Junior, we have a chance to do something important here to save a part of history. Tomorrow morning. Hold on, hold on. What did Laura just put in that suitcase? What? How? Why? How does that even fit in there? Ho, 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 it's magic. You know. Once Mr. Onion knows that, he'll be sure to keep it apart. Hey, are you even listening to me? Yes, you were drawing, weren't you? Junior, you're about to learn a valuable life lesson today. And that lesson is that you better listen to your woman, otherwise she will bring down her wrath on you. Oh, I know the Bible says, don't let the sun go down in your anger, but but she doesn't follow that Bible verse, so you better watch out. You were drawing, weren't you? Maybe. Seriously? What? I needed air support. <laughs> Oh, actually, never mind. That was a good reason to be ignoring her. After all, she was probably talking about makeup or something else that us men don't care about. Now, excuse me while I go up back and chop down a few more trees with my bare hands. All you have to do is make sure that you have your camera at the park at precisely 8 a.m. Can you do that? 8 a.m.? On a Saturday? Of course. Piece of cake. Ho, ho, ho. Junior will not be there. Right. No way. Junior is finally going to feel the consequences for messing something up. Oh my gosh, this is like the first time. It's a shame it will happen to a version of Junior I like, but nonetheless, it's happening to Junior. And that's what really matters here. Oh great, what a disappointment. Now, let's set the camera up over there and we'll get started. Hello, darkness, my old friend. Mr. McMurray, would you be so kind as to turn off your hearing aid for a moment? Wow, someone actually gave Junior the punishment he's deserved. Best episode ever? What I failed to mention, and this was for the sake of presenting that junior joke, is that there was a long song sang by Laura about how much she loves check marks, and yes, it was as terrible as it sounds. Laura then gets a crazy idea where Larry's old band, the Groovy Brothers, can put on a concert to save the park, like we all didn't see this coming the minute she wanted to buy that bet back that park. I mean, it was obvious. Larry is obviously not on board with this idea at all, probably because it sounds like the exact plot to the Muppets movie from 2011. And now it's time for Silly Songs with Larry, the part of the show where Larry comes out and sings a silly song. A silly song all about puppies? I'll name mine. Steve. God help us all. The song is about Larry's search for the perfect puppy. He basically has an excuse for why every dog in the world won't work for him until he goes to the animal rescue shelter and finds... He's awesome! This is the ugliest dog ever, Bob. Please say something to him. Bob doesn't say anything, but really his face says it all. This has been Silly Songs with Larry. Tune in next time to hear Bob say he looks familiar to me. I think he might be a cucapoo. Does he look familiar to you? Oh my gosh. For real, look at this dog. Was one of its parents a cucumber? That is gross. I just want to take a brief moment here and show you my cat, Darth Kidious. I made a comedic short film about him avenging his father's death. Links in the description below. So Larry and Laura go on a veggie hunt for his old partners in crime. Classic 2011 Muppets movie. Is that a classic? It's only, no, I guess not. But anyways, it's just like the 2011 Muppets movie. I wasn't kidding. Along the way, they find Khalil, the caterpillar worm thing, who sings a song that's completely out of place in the VeggieTales universe. When he feels the beat, no matter how much I try. But they then find good old Archibald, who now conducts a symphony. And along the way, Terry Crews puts no hope in all four of them reuniting, especially because of what happened between Bob and Larry in the past. I gotta say, you look like you're doing well. Uh, 
Uh, oh, uh, yeah, I'm doing great. I mean, <laughs> you know me, right? It's all about staying true to the music. <laughs> it's all about the art. Ah, yes, a true artist. Bob would never sell out. Never. Okay, Denny, that was great. Now, the next time, I want you to look right into the camera and say, It's the Rock Reverse Mortgage! The only mortgage that rocks in reverse! Tell me lies, tell me sweet little lies. Tell me lies, tell me, tell me lies. Wow, Bob, I feel truly duped right now. I wish we could go back, 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 back. Maybe we could go. What is it with all the music in this episode? Aside from the silly song, everything has felt completely out of place, almost as if they wanted to make a new and improved VeggieTales, but they were stuck with this one, so they kind of just mixed the two, and it doesn't work. It comes off like a musical set in the wrong time period. Hey, 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 that was actually a good musical with music set in the wrong time period. Don't worry about that part. Bob decides screw the park and screw the Groovy Brothers because he ain't going back, 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 back. We then hear the ultra top secret plan that Terry Crews has. It is so top secret. He says it in a public park at the ice cream stand right next to where Junior is. Here's Lanny, here's Dennis, here's their friendship. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the only thing that would make him any more over the top is if he sang like a villain song. Wow. VeggieTales is going through a weird phase right now. Despite being 21 years old, they're acting like hormonal teenagers. Awesome! You guys should start a band. Hit the road, Jack. What you waiting for? A silly song? Hey, it would at least fit within the VeggieTales universe as we know it. We then found out that Larry got so popular after he left the Groovy Brothers when he pursued a solo career. While successful at that, he ruined the band and his friendship with Bob. Now I'm sure that they won't reconcile and Bob won't come back to play, you know. Now that will happen, so just end the episode now. Episode over. Alright guys, go home. What a shocker! Who saw this coming? On a side note, while I did mention this earlier that this song doesn't really fit in with the VeggieTales universe and kind of songs, it was made technically like 40 years before, you know, this episode came out, so I guess you could give it a pass. It is pretty good. You can sing all the songs you want, but it won't make enough money to beat me. To beat you? Who cares? Just make up a ridiculous price that they can't afford and you win. Easy peasy. As it turns out, Terry Crews has an actual motivation for being evil. Who knew? Turns out that 39 years ago, he was supposed to play his tuba after a Groovy Brothers concert, which doesn't make any sense as he would more than likely open for them, not close. <sighs> Anyways, they put on an encore and Terry, you know, who he never got to play with them before, he gets to play with them now and, and it all works out in the end and whatever. You know, even though they ruined his life and 39 years he's been trying to seek revenge and whatever. You low down scallywags. Whoa, 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 whoa. Calm down with the G-rated language there, pal, all right? Okay. In a matter of just a few minutes, Terry Crews has his bulldozers come in to tear down the park, but Larry offers him to be a part of the Groovy Brothers and he accepts and all is well. You know, Junior also apologizes and Laura forgives him too. Uh, Junior and Laura, they're bound to get married one day. Who knew? <laughs> Who knew that 39 years of uh, pent up anger and oh, I just want to get them would just go away like like that because they he got to join them. You know, I wonder if that would work in Power Rangers. Like Power Rangers like, oh, you know, we're going to stop you from taking over the world. And the bad guy's like, oh, no, you're not. And they're like, why don't you just be on the same team with us? And they're like. Oh, that actually solves everything. That literally was the only thing I wanted was to be on your guys' team. Thanks. And then the season just ends in the first episode. Like, that's it. That'd be that that'd be an interesting season of Power Rangers. I feel like the reaction to that would be pretty funny, actually. Check this out. I'm not gonna buy this park. I'm gonna use my money to restore and improve the park. What? Who saw that coming? Terry Crews uses his money to restore the park and not destroy it? I am utterly shocked. But for reals, how does him putting the bill sale into the bucket make the thermometer peak out? The logic here is impeccable. That was a super groovy story, Bob. Out of sight! Dynamite! Looks like you guys enjoyed the show. Thanks, Captain Obvious. Copy that, Papa Bear! Slap me some skin! Does that mean you like the story? Thanks, Captain Obvious. And so we'll be
Right now, I am a mixture of Larry's face and Bob's face after hearing that rendition. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ forgave you. Ephesians 4.32 What are you doing? Being forgiven makes me want to dance. Me too, but I won't do it for your all sake. I learned my lesson. Always remember, God made you special and groovy. And he loves you very much. Bye! That was Celery Night Fever, and is it the instant classic VeggieTales episode that some of you claimed it is? In my opinion, this episode is really good. It is. It's, we have had three good episodes back to back to back, and that is impressive within itself, but this is not the instant classic. And frankly, I've looked at the last two episodes, and I'm not sure if we're going to get that instant classic. We'll find out. I'm just, I just don't have a lot of hope in it. Stay tuned as next time we review... Tale as old as time. Song as old as rhyme. Beauty and the Beast. Well, actually, it'll be uh, Beauty and the Beat, but close enough. Clearly, it's a Beauty and the Beast ripoff. Anyways, remember that God made you special and he loves you very much. Bye.